Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, is now out for PC. And it's weird. Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Gaia here, and back with a brand new Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time video. So we finally have Crash 4 out on all modern platforms. PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PS5, Xbox Series X, and now the PC version. And as you all know, the PC version is the best version, am I right? Actually, that's not entirely true. There's some really really weird aspects about the PC version. Now, it comes as a shock because 8 times out of 10, the PC port of a game is normally seen as superior in terms of performance, especially when compared to the now previous generation of PS4 and Xbox One games. Spyro Reignited for PC, for example, is the definitive way to play Spyro, hands down. Like, there is no contest against the console releases. Likewise, with Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. Again, no contest when compared to the console release. But then, you bring up Crash 4 and something weird happens. First things first, no, it's not so weird that the game is unplayable. The game is just as playable as just about any version. I just wanted to be clear with that first and foremost. You can play it in 4K resolution and at 60 frames per second, and it plays pretty dang good. Loading times are quick, depending on the type of hard drive you have, of course, and overall the port runs stable. Also, one of the coolest details that this game has to offer is a benchmark mode, where you actually can play through a level and see how your system responds to it, which is something I love seeing. As you can see, I can run the game and record it, at the highest graphical setting with little to no issues. So obviously, in comparison to the console versions, this game runs way better in comparison, right? Actually, no. No, it doesn't. The game runs basically on par with the new current-gen consoles, so the PS5 and Xbox Series X. When I pull up an image from the PS5 footage and compare it to the PC, there is almost no difference. Now, notice I said, Almost no difference, because there technically is some, but this is where we enter the realm of weird. Side by side, it's almost impossible to tell a difference, but when we swap between the images like this, you can see a lot of really minor texture and lighting differences. Some of the texturing and lighting is an improvement, while others offer something different, but almost no improvement, and some that actually take away from the PlayStation 5. On this shot here, we also see that the PC version has a little bit more saturation. While it does make the overall image brighter, it actually makes some of Crash's fur detail go away. On top of all that, the PC port just outright removes random details on this image specifically. An entire tree was just completely removed. Like, why? It's beyond redundant and makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Something else weird that I encountered was that the game would sometimes crash multiple times while booting up, and then specifically when I entered the engine boss fight. The game would just start sputtering and freezing up, causing me to have to end the process through Task Manager. It took three times before everything went back to normal, so I don't know what happened there. All these little weird aspects cultivate to something that's not terrible, but it does not impress me either, especially when compared to the Spyro Reignited and Crash Insane PC ports. But the weirdness gets, well, weirder. For Crash 4 on the PC, you need to be constantly online. If you go offline, the game will actually ask you to go back online in order to continue playing. But it has no multiplayer aspects to the game, at least not yet. The game is a single player game, that doesn't require internet, but it's requiring you to have, be constantly connected to the internet. This has me scratching my head, because while, yeah, most people do have internet, internet infrastructure across the world is not really that stable. On top of that, if Battle.net ever goes down for any reason whatsoever, you can't play Crash 4 at all, even though it's single player. Even if your internet is fine, 
If Battle.net goes down, your game goes down. Also, if you're in a public area with a laptop and there's no Wi-Fi, you can't play Crash 4. If you get to a hotel and the Wi-Fi is goofy or requires you to pay extra and you don't want to pay extra, you can't play Crash 4. If you live in an area where your internet can just die for hours, guess what? You can't play Crash 4 during those times. This is something that just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So, is Crash 4 for PC bad? No, but it runs on par with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. So if you were expecting anything better than that, then you're going to be disappointed. But there is two reasons as to why you might want to grab the PC version. The first one is mods. Yes, the game, even though it requires you to be online all the time and runs through Battle.net, supports mods. As we speak, we are already seeing people change the colors of Crash, make levels, and port different things over to Crash Bandicoot 4. So if you are huge into modding games, it seems that Crash 4 is going to be a playground of fun. But the other weird reason is if you are running a budget PC. If you have a less than optimal PC rig, or maybe a gaming PC that's past its prime, the game's lowest settings are actually quite impressive. When comparing at 1080p between the low and insane settings, the results are actually quite impressive. But I decided to test this a little further. I went ahead and installed the game on a Surface tablet, and it shockingly worked. No, it's not the best, fluctuating between 25 to 30 frames, but it was definitely playable. So if you got a low-end PC, Crash 4 should still work like a charm. Crash 4 for PC definitely fits more of a niche set of players. If you have a high-end PC, don't have an Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, and want to experience the game in the highest possible fidelity, the PC version does work. But if you have a lower end PC though, the game definitely is worth picking up because it still looks great even if you don't have the best rig. The big selling point to me though is the mods. But to be honest, I think I'm gonna stick with my PlayStation 5 version. More skins, haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, and it just feels like a more complete experience. But what do you guys think? Are you gonna be picking up the PC port? Comment below and let me know. Thank you so much to all those who not only support the channel, but myself and my family. Because of your contributions, I'm able to do this full time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button or becoming a Patreon with the link in the description. I also live stream every Thursday and Friday at 7pm Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and say hi. Again, thank you to everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream.